Easter Monday and Palm Monday. Tonight we're going to return to our series on the book, uh, Deepest Thanks, Deeper Apologies. And this is, I believe we're at chapter 8, slash message 8, I think, in our series. Uh, so, tonight we're going to look at, take a look at some of the lenses that shade our view of ourselves and the world around us. So, I want us to, to stop and think. As, uh, as we go through our lives, we wear several different pairs of glasses. Now, these aren't actual glasses, obviously, since I'm not wearing glasses. Some of you guys are. Some of us are blessed with good eyes. Not my wife. Um, but we, we wear these glasses, these lenses, um, that we look at life through. And we all have at least three sets of glasses that I came up with that we're going to talk about tonight. We have our rose-colored glasses. These make life look hunky-dory. We have our bifocals, which I believe would be our favorite pair of glasses to wear because they make our sin look far away while they make our godly parts look bigger than they are. We all have our least favorite pair of glasses. We're going to talk about those a little later, but these are our mirror, mirrored, mirrored glasses. At one point in my notes, I was reading through them and I, I put I typoed Mary. So they're not Mary glasses; they're mirrored glasses. Um, so tonight, we're, our scripture is James chapter one, and we're reading in verses twenty-two through twenty-five. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. We'll get to that a little later. If not, there's some Bibles on the on the tables. Uh, the first set of glasses that we're going to look at tonight is our rose-colored glasses. As I stated before, these are the glasses, that, the lenses that we look at life through that make everything look hunky-dory. I love that word. I grew up with that word. I don't know where it came from, but hunky-dory. Everything's a-okay. Everything's good. When we look through our lives and our sin through these lenses, they make us think that everything's okay. It makes our sin appear as if it's no big deal. And with this, these set of glasses on, it smooths over our sin. It pushes it to the back, and to the back of our mind, or pushes it to the back burner, as the saying goes. Because it makes us believe that it's really not that big of a deal. With this set of glasses on, we don't see the gravity of our sin. We don't see the impact that it plays in our daily lives because we trick ourselves into thinking that everything's okay, that everything's just fine and dandy and that nothing needs to change or should change because we are happy exactly where we are, exactly the way things are. It's just like the pig in the mud. He doesn't know that anything that there's anything better than a pigsty. He doesn't know that there's anything better than a pup. Or we can even compare it to the dog that returns to his mom. He regurgitates it because it wasn't good or it upset his stomach, but then later he returns to it. He returns to his sin. Scripture uses that, that uh, example as, as a dog returning to a vomit, as a, his vomit, as a fool returns to his folly. So when we wear these rose colored glasses, we have that, that mindset that nothing needs to change because we're happy where we're at. We're that pig in the mud. And as Christians, I believe that we tend to lean on these rose colored glasses a bit too heavy. But instead of calling them rose colored glasses, we call it grace. Now, by no means do I at all want to downplay grace at all. Grace is wonderful. Without God's grace, we would be in a world of hurt, and we know that it's only through God's grace that we are saved. Now, I stated before that when we look at the world through these lenses, these rose-colored lenses, we don't think anything needs to change. We believe that we are fine just the way we are because of grace we are accepted. We believe or we think that because of grace, we can continue to live life, just live the life the way that we have been. We think that because of grace, our sin doesn't matter. Now, I want to stop here again and reiterate that grace is very important. I'm not saying that. Grace, that it's not. Grace is really important. Grace is great. But we cannot use it as an excuse. 
We can't feel to fail to see that the change that we so dread has already happened. We are set free, but we are free to live as Christ, free of sin, not free to live in cover of sin. Now the Apostle Paul <coughs> speaks to those of us who wear our rose-colored glasses a bit too much in chapter 6 of Romans. So I'm going to read to you guys um, those verses, verses uh, 1 through 4 in 6. So we'll start at verse 1. It says, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. Now right off the bat, I love the way that Paul puts this so clearly. He asks us point blank. He says, are we to continue in sin that grace can continue to cover it up for? And his answer is, no. The answer is no, not to continue to live in sin, that grace can continue to cover it up. And as we read farther into verses 3 and 4, Paul tells us the reasoning behind this. So let's take a look at that. It, it says, um, it's because we have already been, already been changed by grace. That emphasis there is on the already. We've already been changed by grace. We are already changed. Now we just celebrated Easter, where we take some time out of our year to remember Christ's death because of sin. We take that time to remember his death and then his resurrection into life. And this is exactly what we're talking about here again tonight. We're talking about how because Christ died for us because of sin, then by grace he was raised to life. We also are raised into that same life to no longer, in Him, to no longer live in sin. As it says in the end of verse 4, in our uh, chapter 6 of Romans, it says that we might too walk in the newness of life. That newness of life that we have in Christ because of His death on the cross. So we no longer have to fear that change, that those rose-colored glasses skim over by grace because that great that change has already been already happened through Christ's death. So now we know that we've already been changed. The change has already happened. So we take off those rose-colored glasses and we put on our next set of glasses. And these are the bifocals, our favorite ones. Now with these glasses we have a better view of what grace is, but it's still we're still we're still off a little bit. With these blue, with these our old set of glasses, we just thought that life was hunky dory. It was a okay the way it was. But now we are well aware of our sins and issues, but we only look at them through the parts of the lenses that make our issues look far away. But at the same time, we look at our good qualities, our godliness in the part of the lenses that make it seem close, that make it bigger and, and more what we want to see of ourselves. These glasses cause us to see these two parts of our lives, the goodness and the, and the sin, but they're out of proportion. With our last glasses, we saw our sins, but it was covered by grace. But now, with our new glasses, we're forced to see this sin, but we choose to just forget it. We choose to push it to the back, to make the ungodly parts, or the sin, of the, uh, seem smaller, but our godly parts bigger. We deceive ourselves when we look through these glasses. I love the way that Jesus puts it in uh, Matthew 7, 3 through 5. Jesus is speaking and he says, Why do you see the speck that's in your brother's eye, but do not take notice of the log that is in your own eye? For how can you say to your brother, let me take that speck out of your eye, when there's a log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your, own eye, out of your brother's eye. Excuse me. Now, this is kind of harsh. Jesus didn't throw around accusations very often. So this kind of makes us sit up in our seats and pay attention, or at least it 
does me. Whenever I'm accused of something, I kind of, wait a second, that's not the way it is. I want my story, my side of the story to be heard. So let's, let's take a look at this. Now, I've heard many great sermons preached on this passage, and it's a great passage, actually. One of my favorites. I have many favorites, but... But I want to, tonight I want to take a little bit different look at this passage. I think it's safe to say that in addition to Jesus wanting us to learn the important lesson of not judging others for what trips ourselves up, we can also see how we must first deal with our own sins before we can do those godly things, before we can help others. We must first deal with those, what seem to be small and insignificant because of the lenses that we're looking through issues before we go and do the, the godly things that make us feel better. We cannot look at our sins and shortcomings with the part of the lens that makes it look small and distant, but instead we must deal with it and resolve it before we go to do the good, godly things. It's important for us to realize here that there's nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong with doing these good, godly things, but we first have to deal with our faults and sins. There's nothing wrong with going to church, feeding the hungry, helping someone in need, giving, or anything else that's deemed good or godly. In fact, we're called to do those things, but we have to first get right with God. So now, we've looked at our rose-colored glasses of grace that we use to cover all our faults. We've looked at our bifocal glasses that cause us to look at things out of proportion. Now we're going to take a look at our least favorite, but the most important glasses that we have. And these are our God-given mirror glasses. And when I say mirror glasses, I don't mean the, the house of mirrors at, at the carnival that makes you look fat or skinny or far away or really close. But these are true, this is a true mirror. So all evening we've been, we've been talking about these different sets of glasses that deceive us into thinking that we're not too bad off, or that everything's okay, but that's exactly the problem. We're deceived. That's what the definition of deception is. We, don't, we cannot see the truth. But when used correctly, these mirrored glasses, when used according to the prescription, these mirrored glasses are guaranteed to fix the problem and give us a correct view of ourselves and the world around us. So now, what's the prescription? We all want to know what the answer is, right? So what's this prescription for the new mirrored glasses that God has given us? Well, let's read in James chapter 1, our key verses for tonight, verses 22 through 24. I'm going to read them in the King James Version because when I was in school we were required to memorize it in the King James Version. And that's just what I'm most comfortable with, so bear with me with the these and thous. The verses, James 1, verses 22 through 24. It says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man who beholdeth his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and he goeth his way, and he straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So here we see, Scripture acting as a mirror. You see that the man goes and he looks at the mirror. He sees what kind of a man he is. But then he walks off and forgets who he is. He forgets that he is a sinner saved by grace. That he is a sinner before God. He goes and continues to live life according to the way that he wants to live. So we see that in these verses, these first verses in James, that he's still wearing those first two pair of glasses. He's still wearing the, the rose-colored glasses and the Bible. He's still living life the way he wants. He's not changing anything. He's not following the prescription completely. So now, just, just to drive this point home, I'm going to share with you guys a little bit about how, even this week, I wore the wrong glasses. So, this has happened many times in our marriage over the last year. But it happened this week, well, actually while I was writing about it. I was getting ready to write this down for the message about how I fail wearing the wrong glasses. And it happened, so it's kind of embarrassing. Uh, but I don't know how many times I've been sitting on the couch, and Jenny will be in the other room, and she'll ask me to do something, or she'll ask me a question. 
And it's like it goes in this ear, out the other. Never even heard it. Now, sometimes it goes in, I never hear it, or I don't respond. But other times I do hear it, I think about my response, and because I thought about it, therefore I must have responded. But I never did respond. So I heard, I heard what I needed to hear. I thought about the response, but I never put the response into action. And then I can't figure out why she gets upset at me. Because I responded, didn't I? So, I heard what was expected of me, I thought about the response, but I never got up and did what was asked of me. I never responded correctly, I never did the actions. So, that's the same as, as this man in James 1, who he hears and he sees what he needs to do, but he never acts upon it. He gets up and goes his way and forgets about it. So, we see how... Wearing those other glasses leads us on the wrong road. But let's see how, if we use these mirrored glasses correctly, according to the prescription, not subscription, the prescription, everything works out. So let's look at verse 25 of James chapter 1. It says, But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, so whoever looks into the law of God, into the word of God, and continues therein, so he continues to look in, he being not a forgetful hearer, so he doesn't forget what he hears, like I do when it goes in one ear and out the other. But he does, he responds correctly, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. So we see that when we continually measure, our, measure, measure ourselves against scripture and act upon it, act upon what we see and hear within it, then we are set free. When we continually use these mirror glasses that God has given us in Scripture, according to the prescription, and don't turn away from what we see, but instead we address it, and we deal with our shortcomings. When we refuse to allow ourselves to become deceived by these other lenses that we so often like to use, then we are set free to live in the freedom of Christ. Free from deception, excuse me, and free to live the destiny that God has for us. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this evening, for the chance that we had to gather together in your house to learn about you and your word and the destiny that you have for us, Lord. And I pray that as we go through our, our coming week, that we would stop and think about what lenses we are using to look at ourselves and the world around us. Lord, that we would wear the appropriate glasses of, of Scripture that you have given us that show us the true picture of who we are before you. And that we would act in the correct manner, changing to become the men and women that you desire us to be. I pray that you would watch over each and every one of us as we head out from here and go about uh, our weeks and the plan that you have for us to live out. Pray all this in your holy and precious name.